Dear friends, uh, welcome. Uh, jet lag sometimes gives you rare moments of clarity. And as I was landing last night in New York, I realized no one is here to listen to me speak. Everyone is here to actually listen to the music. So we'll make this, uh, uh, you know, as, as, as brief as I can. What is uh, the contribution of human rights uh, to the arts? Uh, the first thing I would say is that human rights um, protect the right to create art, uh, to admire it, to critique it, uh, to be provoked by it, to respond to it, or to ignore it for that matter. Uh, it is the freedom of expression, uh, the protection of a culture that is enshrined in the um, International Covenant uh, for Economic, Social, Cultural Rights, uh, in the European um, Fundamental uh, Rights uh, uh, Charter. Uh, and uh, these laws, in fact, in practice every day, open doors for artists to create, but also for audiences to enjoy or not enjoy that art. The second thing that I would say uh, in this context is that it is especially controversial art that these human rights do protect. I say this because sometimes people think that it's okay, in fact, to say things or to do things so long as people are not offended. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that if everyone in this room agreed, no one would have come up with the idea of enshrining in the United Nations Charter and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights the freedom of expression. We would all agree. We would just hold hands, sing kumbaya, Go home, go to the Greek reception, have some nice wine. It is when you disagree with someone, and especially when you disagree strongly, and especially when one person has the power to silence the other, that it makes sense to say that I have freedom of expression. And the same exact uh, concept applies to the arts. The third thing I would say in how human rights and what human rights do for the arts is that uh, in many uh, ways especially when it does not relate to a governments or a state action uh, towards the arts, but to uh, non-state actors, including private businesses, uh, whether that might be um, uh, advertisers uh, uh, sponsoring uh, uh, radio stations or museums or anything else, uh, human rights do apply as well. Uh, uh, private individuals don't have the obligation to protect human rights in the same way that governments do. Uh, but uh, they do have the obligation to respect them according to the United Nations and according to the guiding principles on business and human rights. Uh, it is fundamental to keep in mind that even individuals, when they do get engaged in, uh, in uh, free speech and in, uh, in uh, culture, have to respect those rights. Now, many more things human rights can do for arts, but you see how fundamentally they provide an umbrella for all this to unfold. Now, what can arts do for human rights? A lot, a lot, and perhaps we don't talk about this enough. The first thing I would tell you is that um, the arts uh, reignite the, uh, the, the belief in the importance of sparking conversations. Jazz and democracy, uh, jazz democracy, as Dmitry Vasilakis, dear friend, great musician, um, uh, has called this, uh, this enterprise. In a, in a world today where people have stopped talking to each other, more or less they start shouting at each other, where there's such nationalism, such xenophobia, such very often hatred, such disappointment in institutions, all these things, where there are politicians, simple citizens, others who try to divide us between us and them. Jazz tells us that there's no us versus them. In fact, there can be no us without them. There cannot be the creation without the interplay of, of the ideas and the discussion. And I think that that is a remarkable message to send in a world that some are trying to divide. We have to stop that. And art, I hope, and jazz, I hope, can help us do this. Um, now, marginalized groups, many marginalized groups, express themselves through art and, in fact, resonate and touch us in ways that words can't. Refugees, migrants, uh, others, in many societies can use music and use art often do to make themselves present, to make their humanity and their dignity present to people that very often say, I don't want anything to do with them. I don't understand what they do. In many ways, art opens up this ability for us to appreciate humanity, which is so fundamental for human rights. Arts supports that. Arts, since I mentioned 
refugees and migrants has another very important role to play when it comes to human rights. It very often soothes the suffering. If you look at refugee camps around the world, you see how children through art very often deal with the trauma of their existence. Now, mind you, that does not in any way resolve the human rights violations behind what got those children into those camps. And we should not fool ourselves into thinking that it does, but it does provide that kind of relief. Now, art as well chronicles human rights abuses. Think of how many photographs, works of art, music, you in your lives have seen or listened to that have awakened you to human rights abuses around the world in ways that words have never done. Picasso's Guernica is a very famous example, of course, of a piece of art uh, dealing with the bombing of the population during the Spanish Civil War. Um, Hurricane, a Bob Dylan song, brought to spotlight attention in the US on the racial uh, biases of the justice system. There's so much that art does to document and highlight, and then hopefully to bring resolution. And I should say, finally, art appeals very often to emotion as much as it does to our minds. Those of us, like myself, politicians, others doing human rights, very often find ourselves caught up in hard discussions, r rational discussions about human rights. And we tend to forget that many decisions are being taken, not just on the basis of thinking, but on the basis of feeling. And jazz and art does appeal to those feelings. It bridges, it bridges in spite of language or nationality. And I hope that Dimitri and the remarkable group of musicians here today will help us bridge and will help us celebrate the power that art and jazz has to support democracy and all these ideals. Thank you. I'm grateful for the invitation.